on, ladies and gents? Bully Donnelly here at This Is Infamous, and today, via the wonders of digital video, I'll be venturing into the mutant side of Marvel to review the latest entry in the X-Men film franchise, X-Men Apocalypse. Ryan Singer is back in the director's chair to helm the next sequel for the first-class generation of characters, with James McAvoy reprising his role as Professor Charles Xavier and Michael Fassbender putting back on the familiar helmet of Magneto. Favorites such as Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique and Nicholas Holt's Beast return to the mix as well, with new versions of Jean Grey, played by Game of Thrones' Sophie Turner, Ty Sheridan's Cyclops, and Cody Smith McPhee as Nightcrawler being introduced to this particular timeline of films. This time, the mutants must band together to prevent an extinction-level event from happening, brought about by Nsaba Nur, known best as Apocalypse. Apocalypse is believed to be the first mutant dating all the way back to 3600 BCE, and after thousands of years of slumber, his awakening in the 1980s prompts him to want to make some changes around the world. Oscar Isaac portrays the film's new villain, who happens to have a retread of old goals in mind, desiring a global cleanse that will wipe out the weak and leave a scorched earth for those like him to thrive. The problem with such a plan is that because we've seen this before, on several occasions in previous X-Men films, usually championed by Magneto, there doesn't feel like too much new material story-wise for X-Men Apocalypse to explore. I mean, how many films can trot out the same exact plot before we take notice and have difficulty enjoying the taste of the tired and stale? Apparently no more, because X-Men Apocalypse is unengaging on just about every level. It isn't that Apocalypse is a bad villain, but he's drawn so poorly that Isaac's talents are wasted. He may have a few menacing actions here and there when displaying the various gifts he's accumulated over the years, but by and large, there is nothing to him that really establishes him as someone the X-Men need to fear. He never elevates beyond the bad guy of the moment, who stands in the way until the next sequel, with any threats or stakes that should surround him feeling incredibly hollow. Oh, and then there's the distracting voice that plagues the character, which sounds as if Isaac was forced to utter his lines into a box fan. From the ashes of that world! But that might actually be the least of the film's problems. Outside of the film's villain problem, X-Men Apocalypse suffers from a sizable hero problem as well. Namely, there are too many of them. For all the fan worry about other superhero films being too overstuffed with characters, Apocalypse is the one picture that actually warrants such concern. Singer's movie never finds the right balance between the older mutants of the last two first-class films and the newer ones it wants to introduce for future chapters. There are entirely too many balls in the air, and as a result, everyone comes off feeling undercooked. Characters like Beast and Mystique are given fleeting moments that feel incredibly underwhelming considering how much time we've spent with them over the last two movies. These aren't characters that should feel like afterthoughts, but they are. Their contributions wind up being minimized by the inclusion of Cyclops and Jean Grey and a few others who are added to the equation without the benefits of time or careful attention to make their introductions matter. Olivia Munn's Psylocke just feels like she's there. Alexandra Ship's Storm just feels as if she's there. Apocalypse aims to do far too many things in building the mutant universe out, but in order for that sort of expansion to work, the audience has to be given a chance to know who these characters are and decide whether or not to care about them. Such an opportunity does not exist with this X-Men flick. In addition, there is very little to excite you about X-Men Apocalypse. The film suffers from wanting to tell you everything with very little showing going on. There's a great deal of exposition from scene to scene to try to inform you as to what's going on and why it matters, but when it comes to any sort of action, Apocalypse is lacking. It should speak volumes that one of the biggest action sequences the film has is built around a cameo that's missing any sort of coolness it may have previously held because we've already seen it in the franchise before. Even the best setup Apocalypse has to offer feels like a retread from X-Men Days of Future Past. Evan Peters' big moment as Quicksilver then felt as if it stole the whole movie, but now it just feels as if the novelty is worn off a bit. Ultimately, X-Men Apocalypse is extremely disappointing, and easily the biggest misfire of the first class era of mutants. The film never comes close to matching the quality of the previous two efforts, and feels vastly underwhelming in both story and character to make any sort of dent in your comic book movie memory. X-Men Apocalypse is a forgettable film and a step in the wrong direction for a franchise that, as of late, had been getting it pretty right. That is a damn shame. 
Be sure to like this video down below. Feel free to join in the discussion by leaving your own comments and subscribe to the YouTube channel as a whole so you can be notified of all new video reviews, interviews, and podcasts that come your way. That way, you'll never miss a bit of content from us. Until next time, I'm Billy Donnelly for This Is Infamous.